Hello learners, I am Dr. Ritika Sharma, Assistant Professor, Amity Institute of Education, Amity University, Uttar Pradesh. In this session, I am going to discuss about the behaviorism as an approach to learning. As we know that psychology have different schools of thoughts that have influenced our knowledge, perception and understanding of various aspects of psychology. The main schools of thoughts are structuralism through which psychology try to understand the structure or characteristics of mind, functionalism which deals with the nature of mental state and behaviorism which emphasizes on the learning of behavior. There is another school of thought, psychoanalysis, which deals with the study of unconscious mind processes, whereas cognitive psychology mainly deals with scientific study of mental processes. We have a different school of thought that is Gestalt psychology, which emphasizes on mind and behavior as a whole and humanistic psychology which looks on individual as a whole. Out of these schools of thought, today I will discuss and focus only on behaviorism. First of all, a question comes to our mind that what is behavior? Behavior consists of reaction and movements that an organism gives and does during a certain situation. According to behaviorist approach, nobody is good or bad from birth. It depends what kind of environment, experiences and situations one is getting and accordingly behaviors are acquired. Now the next important concept is behaviorism. It is an approach to psychology which emphasizes that all behaviors can be learned or acquired through interaction with the environment. If we look back into the history of behaviorist approach, there was an article psychology as the behaviorist views it. This article was written by the famous psychologist J.B. Watson, who is also considered as the father of behaviorism. In this paper, he outlined the behaviorism as an objective branch of science. He clearly states that it is not scientific for psychologists to study unobservable phenomena, rather measurability and observability of human behaviors are more important. Now, this concept of behaviorism is very helpful when we take it as a source of learning. Behaviorist views of learning is a psychological approach to learning which is mainly based on the idea that all behaviors are learned through interaction with the environment. The behavioral view generally assumes that the outcome of learning is change in behavior and as the interaction take place with the environment Therefore, external events of the environment also have impact on individual's learning. It means the kind of experience any individual is getting in a particular environment, it affects the learning of that individual. Now, there are some basic assumptions of behaviorism as an approach to learning. The first point is environment plays key role in the learning of all behaviors. It means whatever learning take place, interaction with the environment is necessary aspect. Second point that this approach is scientific in nature. It means that measurement and observation of behavior is important point of it. It emphasizes on the importance of observable behavior. And the next assumption is that there is a little difference in the learning process of human and animals. This is evident from the many experiments of behaviorist theories 
where animals were taken to the process of learning and their behavior was modified with the various laws of learning. Behavior is the result of association of stimulus and response. Now these two terms stimulus and response are very important to understand if we want to see the association between these two terms. So what is stimulus? Stimulus is any event that activates behavior and the response is the observable reaction to that stimulus. So there are many psychologists other than Watson who had contributed a lot in the development of behaviorist approach as a source of learning such as Yvonne Pavlov, B.F. Skinner and E.L. Thorndike. As per the behaviorist approach of these psychologists, the concept of learning is a process where the association between stimulus and response occurs. To understand the concept of this learning, it is very important to discuss the concept of conditioning. Conditioning is that process which occurs in a way when organism associated a stimulus with the response. This process of conditioning can be divided into two types. One is classical conditioning and other is operant conditioning. When we talk about stimulus and response association, it also indicates towards the principle of contiguity, which states that whenever two or more sensations occur together and repeat it again and again, they will become associated. Further, later on when only one sensation occurs, the second will be remembered automatically. To make this point more clear, let us discuss the classical conditioning theory of learning given by Ivan Pavlov. Classical conditioning theory describes learning by associations and helps in learning of psychological responses such as fear, salivation or sweating etc. Pavlov through his experiments provided the evidence of a form of learning based on the repeated association of two different stimuli. There are many key concepts in this classical conditioning theory. Let us understand this theory with the explanation of these points. The first key element is unconditioned stimulus. The unconditioned stimulus is any stimulus that constantly produces a naturally occurring automatic response. In Pavlov's experiment, the unconditioned stimulus was food which was presented to the dog. The next important element is unconditioned response. The unconditioned response is the response that occurs automatically whenever unconditioned stimulus is presented. It means that it is caused by unconditioned stimulus. In Pavlov's experiment, unconditioned response was the salivation which occurs because of the food given to the dog. And this process is considered as the natural process that whenever food is given to the dog, there is a natural response that saliva will occur. Now next element is neutral stimulus. It is a stimulus which is not responsible for desired response if it is not associated with unconditioned stimulus. In Pavlov's theory, sound of the bell initially considered as the neutral stimulus because there is no salivation in the dog produced by the presentation of sound of the bell. The next important process comes the process of conditioning. What happened during the process of conditioning? The neutral stimulus was associated with unconditioned stimulus 
and the same association was repeated again and again which ultimately results in conditioning. So what happened in Pavlov's classical conditioning theory that sound of the bell and the food the association take place between these two Pavlov rang the bell first and then provided food to the dog. So this combination was repeated again and again. After the process of conditioning there was a change in the status of neutral stimulus. That neutral stimulus become conditioned stimulus. The conditioned stimulus is the stimulus that is neutral at the start but through repeated association with unconditioned stimulus it produces a similar response to that caused by unconditioned stimulus. In conditioning theory the sound of the bell become conditioned stimulus when its repeated association is done with unconditioned stimulus. Now because of this unconditioned stimulus there is conditioned response. The conditioned response is that response which is learned by the organism and caused by the conditioned stimulus. In the experiment of Pavlov the conditioned response is the salivation produced by the dog when only sound of the bell is presented. That time there was no food, it means there was no unconditioned stimulus. So it was the association between the conditioned stimulus and the conditioned response. Let us have a look on the mechanism of the whole theory. First what happened, whenever neutral stimulus presented there was no response from the organism. That means whenever there was the sound of the bell there was no salivation from the organism. During the conditioning what Pavlov was done that he associated neutral stimulus with unconditioned stimulus and there was an unconditioned response that dog generated the saliva. And when this combination, this association of neutral stimulus and unconditioned stimulus was repeated again and again, there was a process of conditioning. It means after conditioning, conditioned stimulus which was earlier taken as the neutral stimulus is producing the conditioned response from the organism. So this was the theory which emphasizes on the behaviorist view of learning through the association of stimulus and response. Now next important conditioning theory is opponent conditioning theory. This theory was associated with behaviorism and is given by B.F. Skinner. According to this approach of behaviorist theory, if we need to understand the behavior of organism, it is very important to look at the cause of action and its consequences. It is a form of learning in which behavior is changed through consequences. So what is the nature of these consequences? The main point is that, that if the outcome or the consequences of any action or behavior is pleasant or satisfying in nature, there is more chances of repetition of the same behavior by the organism. Whereas if the behavior is followed by unpleasant consequences, there are less chances of occurrence in that behavior in future. Here the type and timing of the consequences can strengthen or weaken the behaviors. There are some important point like in operant conditioning behavior is first then on the basis of con consequences it depends organism will repeat that behavior or will not repeat that behavior. So what happened in operant conditioning there is a very important, important concept of reinforcement. 
So if we want to understand that how consequences can help in strengthening of behavior, we have to understand the concept of reinforcement which generally means a reward. A reinforcer is therefore any consequences which helps in strengthening of behavior. There are two types of reinforcement, positive reinforcement and negative reinforcement. If we want to increase the chances of behavior or the desired response, we provide rewards to the individual whose behavior we want to strengthen. So it is a kind of stimulus which helps to increase the probability of desired response. For example, in teaching learning process, when we praise the students for good work or for their performance, or sometimes we give prize to the student for their performance, there is a uh, possibility that student will repeat that desired behavior again in future because of that positive reinforcement. In case of negative reinforcement, if a particular action leads to avoiding an aversive situation, then that action is likely to be repeated in similar situation and the process is called negative reinforcement. For example, if we sit on a car and not put the seat belt, there is a buzzing sound which will irritate us until we put the seat belt. Therefore, to avoid that aversive experience, we repeat the desired behavior. Here, it is very important to mention that negative reinforcement is different from the concept of punishment which involves in decreasing the behavior. So punishment is the process which decreases the behavior. Again punishment is of two types, type 1 punishment and type 2 punishment. Type 1 punishment is a kind of presentation punishment where punishment is given on the occurrence of undesirable behavior. Whereas in type 2 punishment, which is removal punishment, here pleasant stimulus is removed on occurrence of certain behavior. On the basis of this discussion, we can say that behaviorism has contributed a lot in the field of learning. It has mainly contributed to shift the focus of psychology from the mentalistic approach to behavior. It is also very useful in shaping the behavior of children, developing good habits among them. This concept has also proved effective in developing positive attitudes and deconditioning of emotional fears. One of the important contribution in the development of programmed learning as new methodology of teaching. Therefore, behaviorism is an approach which is very helpful in shaping the behavior of the organism and to gain the desired response from the organism. So dear learners, in this session we have discussed that how we can acquire, how we can modify and how we can bring desirable change in the behavior of the students through the association of stimulus and response. Thank you so much.